Well, we're back working on the the Connie project. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they call these locomotives Connies. It's the Bachman outside frame consolidation. And if you've been watching this series, uh, Don Hendrickson and I are rebuilding three of these. Yes. And actually, at this point, all three of them have been rebuilt. They all have rebuilt gearboxes, uh, proper electronics. Motors are working, all the electronics are working, and uh, we're actually in the process now of starting painting and putting them back together. Right. <laughs> so they've, they've come a long way. They have. Now this locomotive, uh, when, when I found this in Great Britain, it was painted Rio Grande 469, and I've decided to redo it as Mexicano what, 14. What would 14 uh, 14? be? 14. 14. <laughs> Mexicano 14. 14. 14. <laughs> Mexicano 14. Uh, Mexicano Railroad number 14, which was the actual prototype Perfect. that Bachman used. Now, the... Uh, the prototypes, there were three of these running on the Mexicano Railroad, uh, were oil burners. Oh, really? And so uh, that gives them some more room in the tender. Don bought this speaker to use in his, but it's too tall. I should say so. Yeah, so it won't fit underneath the coal load, but it will work in the Mexicano locomotive because that's an oil burner, and this guy can tuck up inside the, uh, the oil tank. Oh, what a cool idea. So I've cut away the top of the coal load here to make room, and this is where I'm going to drop in the oil tank. And it's a great sounding speaker. Oh, I'll say it is. Um, and then Don built this speaker baffle for it. Oh, neat. It's just three inch PVC with a cap. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Listen to the difference it makes, especially uh, to the low frequencies like uh, the whistle and the, the chuff. <laughs> So where you hear that is in the low frequencies. It didn't, it didn't impact the bell really at all. <laughs> it's sort of hard to hear uh, from just the video here. Right. But when you're standing in the room with it, oh my gosh. Oh, it's a big, huge difference. It makes a huge difference. Right. Always, always having an airtight baffle on the back of your speaker really improves the sound. Now, here's the oil bunker. So I started off by simply uh, putting together a wood box. Oh. That just fits neatly down on there, um, rather than trying to, to uh, fabricate the whole thing out of sheet plastic. I thought, you know, it's going to be easier to get the, the curves and everything by building it out of wood. So is that balsa wood? That's balsa wood. Oh, that makes it good and lightweight. And then I always, when we're doing wood, we've learned the lesson, take this thing outside. <laughs> oh, no kidding. We've uh, dusted ourselves more than once. Boy, you'll spend the next two days vacuuming dust out of the crevices if you're using this inside. But anyway, there it is. Oh, look how nice. So that's the exact right shape. And now I will just layer that over with 10 thousandths evergreen plastic. Oh. And that stuff's so thin and flexible, and it just glues right to the wood, and there it is. Oh, my goodness. Check it out. Isn't that nice? That looks nice. Now I'm ready to add some more details to it. I've got to, uh, got to figure out some way to do the rivet detail. Oh, and that's always a pain. Isn't that always Ugh. a pain? Oh, my gosh. Uh, but uh, I also put these strips along the edges. I want to make sure this fits snugly right down over the speaker baffle. 
so that I can I can have it so it just sets down in there and I don't have to mount it and that way if I need to get inside I can very easily just lift this thing off but it kind of snaps into place and uh, onto the filler tube oh so what are we using for the filler tube this is half inch uh, that's the largest size you can get is the half inch evergreen tube okay and then we've got these little uh, metal discs around the shop <laughs> they came in handy a lot oh boy they come in handy for all kinds of things so uh, it's then necessary when you accomplish something big to take it out on the railroad and Absolutely. play with it. Absolutely. <laughs> there it is. I call this testing, but there really isn't anything to test. It's mostly just an opportunity to screw around. Yes. You can see that I've stripped off the original paint, and uh, I'm now ready to put on my, my weathering, my, my other paint, the lettering, and a bit of weathering. But first, I, I need to finish that oil oil tank. Right. But uh, looking good. So far, so good. So I far, like so it. good. I'm very happy with it. Okay, on to the rivet detail now. Oh. These are those Archer decal rivets. Right. And they can look really good. They're really hard to work with. I would imagine. The problem is you have to cut them into these very, very narrow strips, and then they're really hard to get straight, and they want to fall apart. They're just really challenging, but it's a great way to put rivets on. They're just difficult to work with. There has to be a better way, but this <laughs> looks good so far. So far, and there's the hatch, and now I'm I'm ready to, to prime it. I've fallen in love with this Eastwood self-etching primer. Oh yeah, that works really well. I've for years have been using Sherwin-Williams automotive lacquer, but you can't get it anymore. Mm. This is, I think, even better. Eastwood self-etching primer, uh, and then you can get it in the rattle can like this, and I also have a, a pint can of in there, which is like a lifetime supply. Oh, there you go. But it is a lacquer, and, and it etches the metal. It's got some sort of uh, acid, so if you're doing it over brass, or in this case, that aluminum disc, it really etches itself right into the metal. Oh, nice. And then, as always, when working with these lacquers, uh, very small, thin coats, because it is going to etch the surface of the plastic. You don't oh, want to yeah, raise the surface. That's what I was worried about. And there it is, rivets Looks and hatch good. and everything looking pretty darn good. It'll show up a few flaws in the plastic, and you go, oh, got a patch here and here. Railing time. Oh, look at that. So this is a little bit challenging to build the, the metal railings simply because there's two of them and I want them to exactly match mirror images of each other. Mm. So while they have to fit the, the tank, they also have to be exact mirror images of each other. And then I soldered them together with silver bearing solder and this sto Stay Clean Flux. Nice. I just love this technique. It's so easy to work with this stuff. I've got my Weller soldering station. I turn the heat all the way to the top, mm -hmm. and boom, the solder just flows out onto the joints there. It's super strong, super easy to work with. And there it is. Oh, that looks really good. Both railings all set to go, and then I'm going to add a toolbox. On the prototype, there were two toolboxes up here but I think it will look better with just one. Yes, less cluttered. And, and I, it's my locomotive, I'll do what I darn well please. There you go, <laughs> leave the other toolbox on. <laughs> and now a primer on the railings, and there it is, the finished uh, oil bunker, speaker, everything. Oh, that looks really good. Doesn't that, it's just wow. turned out fine. Now I need to get the, the black and the weathering and then the lettering, and uh, there's a few other little details to add here. But I've already done the couplers on this one. Uh, really, the only thing left to do is the marker lights. Mm. And Don and I are working on coming up with marker lights for all three locomotives. There's the current progress. <laughs> wow. But they're going to look really nice, and uh, that's going to be a great feature. But we've got we've to build the lenses now. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there it is. Um, 
Mexicano, what is it? Catorce. Catorce. Mexicano Catorce, ready for final paint and weathering and marker lights. And at that point, it's, it's a locomotive. There it is. <laughs> Well, if you, uh, if you haven't been over to the channel, or heaven forbid, if you're not a subscriber. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> you want to be a subscriber, and you want to follow along this series, because we're just about to finish these locomotives up. Right. So if you're not a subscriber, the easy way to accomplish that is with the blue button. Right there. There it is. There. <laughs> well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Sunday. Yeah. See you then. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.